Hi friends, Jessica Rose here with day two of 30 days of alopecia awareness for alopecia awareness month, which is this September and every September. Um, for my second video, I know my first one was just kind of an intro of what's to come, but I feel like it's best to introduce the type of alopecia that I have specifically because it is different than what your Google searches are gonna show you. So when I was 12 years old, I started losing my hair. It wasn't coming out in clumps. It was almost like I woke up one day and my hair was just really thin, especially on the top. Um, I had really, really long and thick hair. I was born with a shit ton of hair. So it was really dramatic for my hair to just thin out all of a sudden. Um, I did go to my doctor, just our general practitioner. And he told my mom and I, you know, it's hormones. You're going through puberty it's going to even out once everything settles down cool I, we were fine with that explanation because it made sense i was 12 i just got my period my body was changing all right that's a good enough explanation for us so we went about our lives and i went um all through high school and i finished middle school without any regrowth so i think it was about yeah, I was after college. I went through college. My hair was still really thin. Uh, I do the grandpa part to hide the balding in the front. And um, when I was 23, after I moved to LA, I got a biopsy because I knew that there was no way this is still hormonal. Like I'm 23 years old at this point. I waited a long time. I'm ready for something different. So I went to a dermatologist at Kaiser. They took a biopsy of my head and it turns out I have alopecia areata. So I was grateful to know, okay, it's not me. I'm not crazy. I am losing my hair. Um, but I was also really devastated because I didn't understand what that meant for my future. And when I Googled pictures of it, it didn't look like my hair loss. It was very big pa round patches all over the head and completely no hair in those patches. Or it was a uh, complete hair loss, but you still had eyebrows and eyelashes. So I didn't feel like I fit in. Um, so I started wearing wigs to kind of cover up my balding, wasn't a big topper fan just because my hair was so thin and fine throughout. I want it, if I'm going to go for fake hair, I want it like big and, you know, Beyonce. So I did that. Um, and it wasn't until about a year and a half ago. So gosh, this has been 10 years <laughs> in the making of my whole journey with alopecia, um, that I realized the type of alopecia that I have is called diffuse areata alopecia areata. Um, I have some links below where you can see the definition and the pictures, but basically it's sudden uh, hair loss throughout your entire scalp. So which looked like my hair because my hair was, is thin all over. It wasn't round patches that would fall out and then regrow. It was just, I had a sh like the thinnest scalp ever, especially on the top. So that was really a big eye opener because coming out to the alopecia community and not looking like everyone else made me feel insecure. So I'm already insecure because I have alopecia. Then I'm insecure because I don't fit in with other alopecians, which is such a, a horrible way to think because this community is so, so welcoming. It's crazy. I have never embraced nicer strangers in my life than bald ones. So I don't know if it's the lack of hair, they have more empathy, but Alopecians are the nicest fucking people ever. So thank you alopecia community for welcoming me. Um, I've only had one person be like, you don't have alopecia. You just have like, I wanna be a part of a cause syndrome. Fair enough. Uh, I felt attacked at that comment. So instead of using that as a teaching moment, I kind of got defensive and just blocked that person. Uh, now that I'm really secure with myself, and my hair journey, um, I'm at a place where I'm educating people that, hey, hair loss is not created equal. We all look different. It doesn't mean the struggle isn't the same. Um, I could, my hair could fall out differently later on. I don't know if it's always going to be the case for me. Um, but yeah, I feel that I'm really comfortable now, even though I may not look like your typical alopecia. I'm not a baldy, but I do identify with hair loss. And this journey has been very eye-opening for me. And I know that there are a lot of people with my type of alopecia because I've seen them, I've met them on social media, and it's really great that we can stick together and share our stories so more people understand what they're going through and can you know, reach out because it's all about support. 
whenever you are going through something difficult, you can't do it alone. And I did it alone in high school because I didn't know better. Um, but anyway, diffuse alopecia areata, that's the case I have. And it does not run in the family. No one else in my family has it. Uh, my nunna, that means grandmother Maltese, she started having her hair thin probably in her 60s. So she has like female pattern baldness, um, but it is different. So I'm the first and I don't know, I do feel like a unicorn and that kind of is the, the symbol for, uh, for us alopecians, we are unicorns. So that's my case. And if anyone else has diffuse alopecia areata, I would love to hear from you. Leave a comment. If you have any questions regarding it, please ask away. Um, I've learned a lot over the last year about it and I'm really uh, comfortable sharing my story. So please, I wanna hear from you. I wanna meet my fellow diffusers. Um, so yeah, check the links for pictures and examples and check back for my video tomorrow because we're going to be on day three. Day three of 30 days of alopecia videos, which is really fun for me, you guys, because I am new to the whole game and um, I'm really excited to share my knowledge, my tips, my wigs with you. You're going to meet all my best friends. It's going to be really fun. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.